Have you ever found yourself stuck in the middle of rush hour, packed tightly on public transportation, like sardines in a can, only to be hit with the strong smell of sweat from the person standing right in front of you? The smell is almost overwhelming, mixing with the stress and frustration of a long, tiring day. Now, imagine that the person who smells also happens to be a loudmouth, someone who's talking to a friend on the phone using speaker mode for everyone to hear. The noise is irritating, bouncing off the walls of the crowded space, making it hard to think. When someone finally says something, asking him to quiet down, he just shouts back with rude words and keeps on with his loud conversation like nothing happened. We've all been there, haven't we? Running into rude or unpleasant people in public is something we can't seem to avoid. They're everywhere. On the bus, on the train, walking down the street, sitting in restaurants, at work, driving in traffic, and sometimes even in our own homes. These difficult people come from all kinds of places and backgrounds, and they just don't seem to care how their actions affect those around them. They push limits, test our patience, and leave us feeling frustrated, wondering how we should handle them. This is where the ancient philosophy of Stoicism comes into play. The Stoics were wise people who lived long ago, but their teachings are still very useful today, especially when it comes to dealing with difficult people. They wrote about dealing with all kinds of troublesome people, like deceitful family members, rude neighbors, and even those who were just plain unhygienic. Their writings show that dealing with difficult people isn't a new problem. It's been around for a very long time. So, what can we do when we have to deal with loud and smelly commuters, annoying co-workers, or even abusive or narcissistic people we live with? In the previous video, we talked about the option of choosing to be alone, and how that choice often comes from painful past experiences with others. In this video, we're going to dive deeper into how we can handle these and other difficult people by looking at Stoic philosophy and sharing some personal experiences along the way. Let's start with a story about one of the famous Stoics, Epictetus. After he was banished from Rome along with other philosophers, he moved to a city in northern Greece called Nicopolis where he spent the rest of his life. There, he started a school of philosophy, and one of his students, a young man named Arian, wrote down many of Epictetus's teachings. Without Arian, we might not know much about Epictetus today, but thanks to him, we have a collection of lectures and important lessons. One of these lessons is about something very common in Roman times, bathing. Public bathhouses were a big part of life in the Roman Empire. Bathing wasn't just about getting clean, it was also a social activity. People went to the baths to meet friends, relax, and even discuss politics. Even the richest people, who could afford private baths at home, still went to the public baths because of the social aspect. But, as you might guess, not everyone in the bathhouse was pleasant. There were people who splashed water on purpose, others who stole from the lockers, and some who acted like they owned the place, pushing others around. These bathhouses were crowded, noisy, and full of all kinds of people, including those who didn't have the best manners. Epictetus taught his students to remember the nature of what they were doing. He said that every action has certain characteristics that come with it, and when you go to the bathhouse, you should expect to encounter things like loud, rude people and others who might try to take advantage of the situation. The key, he said, was not to be surprised by these things. He advised that the focus shouldn't just be on the activity itself, like bathing, but also on keeping your mind calm and under control. He put it like this, You will be better off if you say to yourself, I am going to the baths and I will keep my mind calm no matter what happens. This way, if something goes wrong, like someone splashing water on you or shouting, you can remind yourself that you expected this and stay calm. 
This approach can be applied to taking public transportation too. Think about what usually happens when you travel by bus or train. Is it always quiet? Is there always a seat available? Are people always friendly? Most of us would say no. Sometimes the bus is crowded, the train is late, and the people around us are anything but pleasant. But if we expect these things, we won't be caught off guard, and we can stay calm. Another famous Stoic was Marcus Aurelius, who was considered one of the good emperors of Rome. Marcus Aurelius was a follower of Stoicism and had to deal with many people every day, including some pretty difficult ones. Some were rude, some were demanding, and others were dishonest or unreliable. Being an emperor was a tough job, and the responsibility was huge. He had to make decisions that affected the entire Roman Empire, and many people were always watching him, hoping to take his place. To cope with the stress and pressure, Marcus Aurelius kept a diary where he wrote down his thoughts and reflections. In this diary he wrote about many things including how to deal with difficult people. One day he wrote about how not to let yourself get upset by someone's bad body odor. He said, don't get mad at people's smell or bad breath, what's the point? They have a body that produces that odor just like you do. But they also have a brain, right? Can't they figure it out? Can't they recognize the problem? So, you have a brain too. Good. Use it to help them see the issue. If they listen, great, you've solved the problem. And if they don't, well, at least you tried without getting angry. What Marcus Aurelius meant was that we can't control other people's behavior. Even as an emperor, he couldn't force people to act a certain way. People have their own minds, their own will, and they make their own choices. If something about them bothers us, we can point it out, but that doesn't mean they'll change. Some people might not care at all about what we think, and that's out of our control. The Stoics believed it wasn't worth getting upset about things we couldn't control. When we deal with people who behave badly, we often focus on the negative parts of their behavior. A common example is how we sometimes see our parents. As we grow older, we might start to notice their flaws more and more. Maybe they made bad decisions, maybe they're too critical, or maybe they're always meddling in our lives. These traits can drive us apart from them, and sometimes it seems like there's nothing we can do to change them because only they can decide to change. But Epictetus had some advice about this too. He suggested that we try to see the good in people, even when they have negative traits. He gave an example of someone who was struggling with a brother who wasn't treating him fairly. Epictetus said, everything has two handles, one you can hold on to and one you can't. If your brother is being unfair and you focus only on his unfairness, you're grabbing the handle that won't work. But if you focus on the fact that he's your brother and you grew up together, you can carry that better. In other words, instead of focusing only on the bad parts of a person, try to find something positive to hold on to. This doesn't mean ignoring the bad stuff, but it helps us to see that there's more to people than just their flaws. From my own experience, I've noticed that sometimes when I'm alone with my thoughts, I start to magnify the bad sides of people. I might start thinking of them as villains or as people who are just out to make things difficult for others. But then I remind myself that these bad traits aren't the whole person. There are other sides to them, good sides, that I can focus on instead. But sometimes, no matter how hard we try, the situation is just too bad. Some people are too toxic to be around. And in those cases, we might have to take a different approach. Let's imagine you're living with someone who has started a fire that's filling the house with smoke. As long as the fire is small and the smoke is tolerable, you might stay inside. But what if the smoke becomes too much to bear? What would you do then? Would you stay inside and keep breathing in the smoke? Or would you get out? 
Let me share something personal. I haven't spoken to my father for more than five years now. We used to be close, but in the spring of 2018, I made the decision to cut off contact with him. It wasn't an easy decision, and it didn't happen overnight. It was the result of many years of experiences, some of which still seem unbelievable when I think back on them. My father shows many of the signs of Narcissistic Personality Disorder, NPD, although he's never been officially diagnosed because he doesn't think he has a problem. In his mind, it's the world around him that's at fault. But regardless of what label might fit him, his complete disregard for boundaries, his manipulation, his constant lying, his need to feel superior, and his obsession with revenge made him dangerous to be around. Before cutting off contact, I tried all sorts of things. I spoke up for myself. I tried to find the good handle to grab onto. I tried changing my behavior to keep the peace. I spent time alone to gather my thoughts. But no matter what I did, nothing seemed to work. So, I made the decision to go outside to remove myself from the situation. Just like getting away from a smoky fire, I had to step away for the sake of my own well-being. If you're in a situation where you're dealing with someone who has NPD, or even if you're in an abusive relationship, I want you to know that Stoic teachings can help you too. While it's important to remain calm and rational, it's also important to know when it's time to leave. The Stoics didn't teach that we should stay in harmful situations at all costs. Instead, they taught that we should use our reason and judgment to decide what's best for us. Sometimes, the best thing we can do is to remove ourselves from a toxic situation, even if it means distancing ourselves from someone we once loved or cared about. It's not about giving up, it's about protecting ourselves and finding peace. Another important aspect of dealing with difficult people is handling criticism. We all face criticism at some point in our lives, whether it's from a boss, a friend, or even a stranger online. Sometimes the criticism is constructive and helps us grow, but other times it can be hurtful and unfair. The Stoics had a particular way of dealing with criticism that can be really helpful in our modern lives. They taught that we should first take a step back and consider the criticism calmly and objectively. Is there any truth to what's being said? If so, we can use it as an opportunity to improve ourselves. If not, we should let it go and not let it affect us. Marcus Aurelius often reminded himself not to take criticism personally. He believed that if someone criticizes you, it's often more about them than it is about you. They might be having a bad day, or maybe they're dealing with their own issues and taking it out on you. Understanding this can help you stay calm and not let their words get under your skin. Epictetus also had advice on this matter. He taught that we shouldn't worry too much about what others think of us. After all, we can't control other people's opinions or actions. What we can control is how we respond to them. If someone criticizes us unfairly, we have the power to decide whether or not we let it bother us. We can choose to respond with patience and understanding, or simply ignore it. This is easier said than done, of course, especially when the criticism feels deeply personal or comes from someone we care about. But by practicing this approach, we can build resilience and become less affected by others' negative opinions. One of the core principles of Stoicism is acceptance. This doesn't mean accepting bad behavior or staying in harmful situations but rather accepting that the world isn't perfect and that people are flawed. The Stoics believed that by accepting the world as it is, rather than as we wish it to be, we can find peace. Seneca, another great Stoic philosopher, wrote extensively about the importance of accepting the things we cannot change. He advised that we should focus on what we can control, our thoughts, our actions, 
and our reactions and let go of everything else. When we encounter difficult people, instead of getting frustrated or angry, we can remind ourselves that we can't control their behavior, but we can control how we respond. This acceptance also involves understanding that everyone is going through their own struggles. People who act rudely or selfishly may be dealing with problems we know nothing about. By approaching others with empathy and understanding, we can reduce our own stress and maybe even help them in some way. For example, when dealing with someone who seems overly critical or harsh, it might help to remember that they could be projecting their own insecurities or frustrations onto others. Instead of reacting with anger, we can choose to respond with kindness or simply not take their behavior personally. In Stoicism, inner strength is key to dealing with difficult people and challenging situations. This strength comes from knowing yourself understanding your values and staying true to them no matter what. The Stoics believe that by focusing on what truly matters, our character, our virtues, and our sense of purpose, we can withstand any adversity. One way to build this inner strength is through daily reflection. The Stoics often practiced a form of journaling where they would reflect on the events of the day, considering how they handled different situations and what they could do better next time. This practice helps to build self-awareness and strengthens our resolve to act in accordance with our values. Another way to cultivate inner strength is through practicing mindfulness. By staying present in the moment and not letting our thoughts run wild with worry or anger, we can maintain our calm and composure. This doesn't mean suppressing our emotions, but rather acknowledging them without letting them control us. The Stoics also believed in the power of perspective. When faced with a difficult person or situation, they would remind themselves that in the grand scheme of things, this moment is just a small part of their life. By keeping things in perspective, we can avoid getting overwhelmed and maintain our focus on what truly matters. Dealing with difficult people is something we all have to face at some point in our lives. Whether it's a rude commuter, a critical co-worker, or a toxic family member, the challenges they bring can test our patience and resolve. But by drawing on the wisdom of Stoic philosophy, we can find ways to navigate these challenges with grace and strength. Remember that you can't control others, but you can control how you respond to them. By practicing acceptance, focusing on what you can control, and cultivating inner strength, you can handle difficult people and situations with a calm and resilient mindset. It's also important to know your limits and recognize when it's time to step away from a harmful situation. Protecting your well-being is not a sign of weakness, but of wisdom and self-respect. So. The next time you find yourself dealing with a difficult person, take a deep breath, remind yourself of these stoic principles, and approach the situation with calm and confidence. You might be surprised at how much easier it becomes to handle the challenges that come your way. And remember, you're not alone in this journey. The stoics faced many of the same challenges we do today, and their teachings have stood the test of time. By learning from their wisdom, we can find peace and strength in even the most difficult of situations.